the big story tonight. The whole world taking extreme precautions to slow the spread of coronavirus. Good evening. I'm Mark Wright. I'm Joyce Taylor. The World Health Organization today declared the coronavirus crisis a pandemic. And local health officials say the latest local numbers are guaranteed to go up in the coming days. There are currently 29 deaths that have been confirmed among at least 366 overall cases here in Washington. The state health department reports 3,403 people have been tested. Crowds of 250 people or more are now banned in western Washington. I've talked to some of the business leaders. They understand why this is necessary, including some of the pro sports franchise. Uh, I anticipate we're going to have broad acceptance of this. What do you say to the people who say this is a complete overreaction? Well, go talk to those families of the 22 people who, who died and their loved ones. And I think you'll find that, uh, and that, that these are loved people in our families and they deserve protection. And this is a way to protect them. And the beautiful thing, if there is one, is that we know what we got to do. We simply got to reduce those social interactions. Following the governor's announcement, the Seattle School District, the state's largest, decided to take what it calls drastic measures. It is going to be problematic. I mean, we have shut down the district for snow days, a couple days at a time, and the impact of that even. So, I mean, two weeks right now is unprecedented for this district. We'll learn a lot of lessons as this two weeks continues. But anything longer than that, which may be what they forecasted today, We'll have to take it day by day. So Seattle joins Everett, Bellevue, Lake Washington, Shoreline, and many more school districts in canceling classes in the coming days. Western Washington University, the University of Washington, WSU, all of them are moving their classes online. Well, before we talk about what those announcements mean for parents and workers in Western Washington, the president earlier tonight announced he is restricting travel from Europe to the United States. To keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new so now we are learning that that statement wasn't entirely complete. King 5's Vanessa Mishanya joins us live from SeaTac Airport tonight with clarifications from the Department of Homeland Security and implications of this announcement, Vanessa. Good evening, Joyce. We're learning more about the specifics of this announcement, right? This is not a ban on all travel coming into the United States from Europe. This is only impacting foreign nationals coming into the country. So let's get to that announcement from the president today. He announced that beginning on Friday, travel by foreign nationals from Europe into the United States is suspended for 30 days. Now, this does not include travelers from the UK. Now, the Department of Homeland Security, they provided later on today some more clarification saying this does not impact U.S. citizens, green card holders, or the family of U.S. citizens. And then the president later clarified in a tweet that cargo and trade will also not be impacting. Again, this is strictly foreign nationals coming into the country. So as far as the impact here in Washington, it's kind of hard to predict right now. So SeaTac does have a fair amount of flights that come in from Europe, but it's not the busy tourist season at the moment. However, Delta just announced yesterday that it is cutting international flights by 25% in the wake of the outbreak. And our own aviation specialist, Glenn Farley, says that with this new ban, the airplane making industry could be taking a big hit during this pandemic. If this is going to become a sort of post 9-11 level recession for the airlines, which a lot of the airlines are talking about here, what is the recovery phase in terms of those airlines coming back and buying new planes? Again, lots of uncertainty surrounding how exactly this ban will impact the industry, SeaTac, other airports around the country. But what we know for sure is that this is just another shocking announcement in a series of shocking announcements. Uh, today that are really going to impact our lives when it comes to containing the virus and the effort to do so, guys. All right, Vanessa, thank you. When, as the markets continue a free fall over fears about the virus, the president also called for low interest loans for small businesses and deferred tax payments for workers and businesses impacted. He also urged Congress for immediate payroll tax relief. Here at home tonight, the changes to schools begs the question, where will kids go if parents can't stay home? King 5's Britt Moore spent the day trying to find answers, and she joins us from outside Greenwood Elementary School. So what are parents saying, Britt? 
Well, Joyce and Mark, we know thousands of students and parents. Well, they are coming up with a backup plan tonight, a mad dash to figure out what they're going to do. We know nonprofits all over the area, all over the city, especially. Well, they are preparing for students who are looking for a safe place to turn for the next few weeks, maybe even months. Seattle Public Schools closed for at least the next 14 days. Other school districts could follow suit. Now the mad dash to figure out what to do about child care. I realized that my only problem with school getting canceled was having too much free time. And this is the case with many other middle school kids. 13 year old Josie Dros is one of the 53,000 Seattle students who's having to adjust. She's now using her off time to help. I decided to reach out to some of my friends and we decided that it would be really great if we could babysit for these families that don't have childcare. Um, if school gets canceled. She's launched the Good Kids Network, connecting middle schoolers with parents looking for babysitters. Throughout King County, the Boys and Girls Clubs of King County stepping in as well. We recognize that not everyone has the ability to stay home to care for their kids, and so we've decided to extend the hours in nine of our clubs. The clubs are offering a $50 membership and a $25 a day fee. Meanwhile, we're getting a lot of phone calls. The Nanny Parent Connection is all hands on deck as the group helps its 20,000 members connect to child care providers. We've noticed several teachers uh, from the uh, Seattle School District who are, you know, again, coming into the community saying, you know, schools are closed. I need to, you know, maintain my income or at least um, not just sit on my hands and do nothing. While parents feel the pinch of school closures, resources will likely continue to grow as the community steps in to relieve some of the stress. I'm glad that we could find a way to make a difference and a positive impact and find something uh, good that could come out of it. Yeah, we know more places are likely to step up in the coming days. We, of course, will update you on all of that information online at king5.com. For now, we are live in Seattle tonight. Britt Moore, King 5 News. All right, Britt, thanks for the update there. So as we said, the list of school closures is growing. For a full list of the closures, just text the word schools to 206-448-4545, and we will send you a link. The basketball world is stunned tonight. The NBA has suspended all play following tonight's games until further notice. The league will use the hiatus to determine the next steps moving forward regarding the coronavirus. It all started in Oklahoma City tonight when the Jazz Thunder game was suddenly canceled. Jazz center Rudy Gobert tested positive for the coronavirus. Just before tip-off, the Thunder's doctor ran on the court and grabbed the referees. After meeting with the refs and the coaches, the players were sent off the court. The NBA then postponed the game and the arena was cleared. And on the West Coast, the Pelicans-Kings game was postponed tonight in Sacramento out of an abundance of caution. One of the referees assigned to that game also worked a jazz game two nights ago. Mavericks owner Mark Cuban was caught by the TV cameras reacting to a note on his phone right around the time the NBA suspended the season. A stunned Cuban raced to the Mavs bench. Later, he said the virus scare feels like a movie. The National Hockey League says it's aware of the NBA's decision to postpone games and is evaluating options. The NHL will have more to say tomorrow. Joyce? Paul, thank you. Well, the year's March Madness basketball tournaments will be played, but without fans. Spokane is hosting the first two rounds of the men's tournament, which starts next week, and it's going to be a huge financial hit to the city of Spokane, which had been counting on fans from all around the country. Taylor Vido reports. Shock and disappointment. Those were two words used by Spokane sports leaders to describe the NCAA's decision to not allow fans at basketball games here next week at the Spokane Arena. Still, local sports leaders said they wanted to stand behind the NCAA's move. I guess, are we shocked? Yeah, we've never been down this path before. The Spokane Sports Commission says they were like the rest of us this afternoon, caught off guard by the NCAA's unprecedented decision. For all March Madness games, the NCAA said that only essential staff and family members would be allowed to attend. That after an NCAA coronavirus advisory panel suggested against letting fans watch. This is a, a moving story for us and we're, we don't know a lot 
about what that entails. Spokane sports leaders said the NCAA would handle refunds for fans, but for Spokane's economy, the damage may already be done. This wasn't the first time Spokane had hosted March Madness games, and based on previous years, the city's sports commission estimated that Spokane was set to rake in $4 million from the tournament, in addition to 4,000 hotel rooms being booked. So it is disappointing. There obviously is an economic impact associated with this. As of now, both Junior League hockey games and arena football games were still scheduled to take place at the Spokane Arena. In Spokane, Taylor Vito, KN5 News. Well, a day after our state's primary, the results have flipped in the race for the Democratic presidential nomination. Also coming up, we hear King 5 tonight held a coronavirus town hall on all of our platforms. Next, we will highlight some of your questions, and there were a number of great ones. And we're learning how coronavirus can spread on different types of surfaces, what the Verify team learned when we come back.